Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 12 through 16. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit, because I found not Titus, my brother, but taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. Verse 14, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you once again for allowing us to gather together as brothers and sisters, to sing praises unto you, to pray, and to listen to your word. Father God, help us to fear you and your word. And especially, Lord, please fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Please speak through him and open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Convict us, Lord God. We are living in these wicked times, and we need strong preaching for us to change. And yes, we ask you, Lord God, that you continue to work through our church here to spread your word. And Lord, please be with those who are struggling spiritually, physically, or emotionally. Please be with them. Provide uh, your blessings to them. Uh, we ask you that you will keep us from devil's attacks and that you will receive all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The title of the message is Victory in Lord Jesus Christ. Victory in Lord Jesus Christ. When we look at verse 14, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Everybody wants to triumph. You know, right now, Olympics going on, and their goal is to triumph over their competition. And it is their life's goal. They work because the Olympic comes every four years, and in this case, you know, fifth year, they come, they train, you know, night and day for that one moment. And if that moment goes well, you know, some of them win medals. But if they do not do well, then all that years of, you know, hard work, toil, you know, will just go out the window. As Christians, you and I need to find victory on a daily basis, especially after you know, summer camp, after great events. You need to continue on. And in order for you to continue on, you need to have a goal. And in order for you to have a goal, you need to experience some of the victories in your life. And as you experience more victories in your life, it gets easier and easier to triumph over certain aspects of your life that you're struggling with. If a track star, if a track runner wants to beat that 10 second mark and they get close and close and close and they're always asking themselves, why can't I break that 10 second mark? And then they study, they put their time into it, maybe they change certain ways that they run and they finally break that 10 second mark. They run 9.9, 9.8 9 and they have understanding now, this is what I need to do to break that 10 second mark. As Christians, you need to have ways to have victory over many of the things that goes in your life. Whether it's you know, at school, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, you constantly need to understand that you're in a spiritual battle with the devil, the world, and your flesh. And that battle will not end until the day of the rapture or until you die. So you have to expect it, okay? When you wake up, it's not like oh, hunky, hunky dolly or whatever the term is, and you're like, okay, it's going to be a good day. And then you have a one bad incident come, right? You, you're walking, 
and then you're going to the bathroom to wash up and you stub your toe you know, on a certain thing, whether it's a chair, table, furniture, it hurts a lot. And then you start telling yourself it's going to be a bad day, right? And you shouldn't be like that. Throughout the whole day, it is a battle. And it is something that you have to understand. It starts when you wake up and it continues until you go and you fall asleep, right? A lot of times, you get defeated by the devil, your adversary, your enemy, because you forget that you're in a battle. You forget that today, there's going to be a victor, and there's going to be a loser, right? There's going to be a defeated, and there's going to be a one who's triumphant. If you were to leave each Christian day, each Christian moment, knowing that it's a battle, it is fight, then you work harder. You will actually become a you know, more diligent Christian. A lot of times, lazy Christians, it's all about just pleasuring themselves, not doing the hard work, and just let the time pass us by. How many times do you think those people who actually put their heart and soul and their tears and blood into their you know, exercise, training for Olympics, took it easy, right? Those who triumph, they actually work hard every single day. I don't know if they're saved or not, right? And women's volleyball team for U.S. won gold for the first time in the history. It's the first time in the history yesterday. And their leader, a guy named Karch Karai, I don't, I don't know if he's saved or not, right? He had love for his team, his children. I mean, not his children, but children age, right? He's six years old. Most of the players are in their 20s and 30s. After their victory, semifinal against Serbia, you know, he did an interview. You know, you know how after games, they have interviews, you know, like a, whatever the sporting event is. And this announcer, you know, reporter asked, you know, for your comments. And out of the blue, you know, he just, he was tearing up. He was tearing up. I mean, literally, like, you know, he was crying. And then his comment was that, I really want these girls to experience top of the podium. And then interview just ended like that. And of course, you know, yesterday they, they you know, had a battle against Brazil and then they beat him and won. And then everybody was just crying, tears of joy. And he was so happy. When a human being has that kind of desire and love for their own team, how much do you think our Lord Jesus Christ have for you and I? He wants what's best for us. He always wants us to find victory in him. And you can find victory only in Jesus Christ. Nothing else. Don't try to find your victory in your looks, in your works, right? In your finances, in your ability. You can't. Those will bring you defeat. You could only find victory through Jesus Christ and him alone. That's why the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Because it is something that you and I have to practice. It has to become part of our life every second, every minute, every day of our lives. The reason, you know, when Brother Matthew has a, how should I say, question or something about doing the work of the Lord is because the devil wants to defeat him. However, when he trusts Lord Jesus Christ and leave it up to him and goes out there and do the street preaching, reaching out to hundreds and thousands of souls, then he found victory in Lord Jesus Christ. Same thing with Brother Richard and same thing with all the young men and young ladies, right? How can you defeat devil without the Lord Jesus Christ? How can you say, I can triumph over this world, the flesh, and the devil without the Lord Jesus Christ? That's why Jesus Christ has to be part of your life. Jesus Christ, who lives in you, remember, he lives inside of you. 
Let him work. You know, Amen. be careful for nothing, right? But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Amen. You have to bring it to the Lord. You know, the Bible says that you don't have to worry, right? You know, for he cares for you. You know, in the book of Peter, yes. it's time for you to stop having anxiety attacks. Amen. It's time for you to stop worrying yes. about things of your life. Give it to the Lord. Yes. Let Lord worry about it. You know, when you, when you can't actually realize it and when you can truly understand it, where, you know what? I can't have victory in Lord Jesus Christ. I can't have victory of all my anxieties and worries in my life. Only thing I have to do is I just need to give it to the Lord. Yes. How hard is it? Right? You know, what a friend we have in Jesus. We have hymns like that. I mean, the guy lost his fiance. He saw his fiance dead out of the carriage the day before his wedding. He heard, came, moved to Canada, lost his fiance again two weeks before. But he found strength. He found victory. He was able to triumph over his circumstance. Why? He brought it to the Lord. We sang him today, Victory in Jesus, you know, by E.M. Bartlett. He was a very successful businessman, and he's the founder of, I think, Hartford Music Company, where a lot of the gospel you know, came out of that company. He was a successful person. However, when he was in his early 50s, around 52, back in 1939, he got stroke. You know, stroke came. And uh, that's why you have to really be always on your toes, right? Be sober, be vigilant, because you don't know when your adversary, the devil, is going to try to eat you alive. Right. You know, that 900-pound lion just walking about, you know, imitating Christ, right? And trying to destroy you. Imagine if you're in a room, if you're in a den, or imagine if even in here, if suddenly through the back door, you know, 900-pound lion just comes in. I don't know what, you know, Sister Mina's going to do, right? I think lion could eat it with one bite, but I don't know. I'm pretty sure, you know, our young man will try to protect her. Why? Because Brother Nathan prayed, quit you like man. And if you're a man, I expect him to be the first one over there, right? I mean, I, I mean, kidding aside, I mean, that's, that's a, I mean, I'm straying away a little bit from the preaching, but as a man, you have to protect, Amen. protect your family, no matter what, yeah. right? Yes, it's not about my, you know, Sermon on the Mount, that thousand-year kingdom, right? We're living in a different period. Yes. If someone slaps your wife on the face, you punch him in the face that's so that they'll right. never do it again, right? right? If someone brings a gun to your house, you bring your, you know, variety of guns, and then you fight back, right? It's, it's your job as a man to protect your wife and your children. It's not backwards. And this society has turned backwards, where women are protecting the man. You know, that's not how it is. That's not how it's supposed to be. You're the man. You have to act like a man, and you have to quit, quit you like man and protect your weaker vessels. Right? Going back to, you know, our main thing, right? I mean, imagine if that 900-pound lion comes in. What are you going to do? I mean, you could be crazy and try to fight it on your own and let it, let it eat you alive. However, you can't go to the Lord, just like Daniel in Lion's Den. Lord Jesus Christ, who's the creator of the universe, Almighty God, can do anything. I mean, he can make the impossible possible. That's why we pray. You know, we're not believers of, you know, those like Benny Hinn healers out there, right? No, we believe in prayer, right? And if it's Lord's will, Lord's going to heal God's people. If it's not, at least God's people will go to heaven. You know? And that's another, in fact, great blessing. That's why you have to constantly... Because your flesh is constantly telling you, you're weak. Yes, you're weak. 
you're a loser. Yes, you're a loser. You're going to lose. Yes, you're going to lose. But you have to tell your flesh, in Christ Jesus, I will win 100% of the time. 100%. You know, Lord Jesus Christ, if you trust him, and if you trusted him as your Lord and Savior, whatever the circumstance is that you're going through in your life, whether it's easy or hard, because some people have it easy, right? Especially young kids. You don't have to worry about finances. You don't have to worry about, you know, bringing food to the table. You're just waiting for your mommy and daddy to put some nice, you know, food on the table. You just eat and you go to sleep and then you repeat the cycle. However, for adults, you do have to worry about other things, right? Supporting your family, you know, making the finances work. And especially those who's going through some physical ailments, you have to worry on top of everything, your physical illness as well. So whether your life is easy, whether your life is hard, you can always find victory in Christ Jesus, and you will always come out triumphant. You'll always come out as victors. I mean, think about that. You know, these athletes, Olympic athletes, they're looking for that secret sauce where I could win all the time. And they're like, man. And some people do steroids because of that. Right? <laughs> you know, if they get caught, you know, they lose everything. Right? And uh, there's, there's even you know, controversy going on right now with the 100 meter runner winner because he was associated with a nutritionist who was involved in steroid. Uh -oh. That's cheating, right? However, as Christians, you will always have victory. Imagine that. Think about that. Man, I can be on the top of the podium, right? Now, this guy was crying for his team before even he won the podium because he really wanted his team to win. But you can experience it every single day. Amen. You're like, on the, you know, people, you're like, I want gold medal. Hey, you can have gold medal. You could have a platinum medal. You could have, you know, all kinds of medal in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you'll be on top of the podium, yeah. right? right? And then you have your own mansions, right? And you, have, you know, streets is uh, like a pure gold. I mean, what more can you ask? Amen. Amen. What do you have to go anywhere else for your victory except Lord Jesus Christ? Let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Whatever hardship you're going through right now, whatever you know, up and downs of life that you're going through, you can find victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have such a sound promise in the Word of God. You could go to the Word of God. Man, sometimes the words are not enough from someone speaking to you. Go straight to the Word of God. Romans chapter 8. We're going to look at two verses, verse 28 and verse 31. The Bible says, Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things, whether it's good or bad, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We're talking about saved people here. And verse 31, what shall we, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us. Not the world, not your flesh, not the devil. They're nothing in the sight of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're nothing when it comes to Lord Jesus Christ. When, when you realize and recognize that everything that's happening in my life, whether it's good, you, know, you have some blessings, whether it's bad, uh, some things seem bleak, right? In, all things are happening. Why? Bible says, together. They will work together for good to them that love God. You're already in it. Yes, amen. You're, you're already part of this verse. Yes. There's no reason for you to be like, oh, am I included? <laughs> you are. If you trust that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, yes. this verse is talking to you. For good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. Man, this is like a, my life first, and this is life first for many of the Christians out there. You know what? Whether I'm down in the gutter, whether I'm 
high on the podium, I know that all these things work together for good. At the end of the day, you know, God, there's no coincidence with God. All these things will work out for good. I mean, that is a great assurance that you could have, right? You know, I am, for some of you, you know, I mean, Lord bless you. I mean, you have to go through, you know, one of the hardest things, which is facing cancer and physical illness and stuff. You could always hang on to this verse. Even through my cancer, even through my, you know, bones breaking, even through, you know, my immune system not working, right? Even through my lamps don't work like it used to. You could say, why? You could say confidently that I know all things, even all these ailments, all these hardships, all these toils and trials and sufferings and all these, you know, tears, all things work together for good. Why? Because I'm God's child. That's it. With that assurance, how can you not go through your life with victory? How can you not go through your life with joy in your life? How can you not go through your life, you know, praising Lord Jesus Christ every day? I mean, think about it. I think now I remember before I got into mix up with, you know, Brother Nathan's story, I think I was talking about victory in Jesus. Yeah, going back to it. So E.M. Bartlett, successful businessman, founded the recording company, including, you know, through his company, I'll Fly Away. You know, we sang a lot in summer camp, like those songs came out. But he had that stroke when he was in his early 50s, about 52 or 53. And think about it, the guy, Lord blessed him. He knew Lord blessed him. You know, he had a successful business, everything. But during that time, that's when he wrote Victor in Jesus, his last hymn, right? After stroke, after going through probably the hardest thing in his life. And Victor in Jesus, that kind of like a, summarizes everything, right? Think about it. He wrote it at his hardest time, toughest time. And that victory in Jesus has brought many to the Lord and has given a lot of encouragement and strength to you and me. That victory in Jesus only came about, why? Because he was able to find victory in Jesus even through his stroke. Even through when his part of his body was paralyzed. And after, you know, a couple couple years, he passed away. But he left a you know, lasting legacy because why? He found victory in Jesus. Then now you have to look at your own life. You have to look at your own life. Am I going to triumph over all parts of my life by trusting and relying and talking to and committing my life to Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you going to be defeated because you give up right away? Mm -hmm. You know, certain times, you got to give some people credit. So you can see that, you know, I follow some Olympics. And American girls, they're pretty good at basketball. Physically, they're just intimidating. I mean, they're they're already like 6'8", 6'7", taller than everybody. Uh, how good you are, everybody in this room, you're not going to beat them, right? Uh, they're, they're that good. But you got to give credit to Team Japan. You know, being Asian and all, they're not the tallest, right? But they got to the gold medal game. They beat, you know, European firehouses. I didn't even see the game, right? But I read about it. Even though they were down by 10 points, double digits, 20 points, they fought till the end. You know? Certain people, when you face adversity, you quit right away. Yes. I've seen, I seen some other teams who play against American, you know, women's team. Like, they just quit. <laughs> we can't beat them. Why not? You know, 
I'll shoot from half court. You know, maybe that will give me like 20 points. And they never make it, right? And you just get intimidated. When you realize that this adversity, I can't beat on my own. This adversity is impossible. This enemy is impossible for me to defeat. Then it's a good start. You could rely on Lord Jesus Christ. You could go to him. You have to realize right away that losing mentality to yourself that, you know what? I can't do anything, right? Yeah. I'm going to lose. Yeah. But whether it's a most daunting, intimidating team out there, ever city out there, ever uh, yeah, enemy out there, you know what? I'm, I could defeat them. Yeah. Why? Because I'm not the one who's fighting. Lord Jesus Christ is. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ is out there yes, fighting for me. Thank Man, you. when you think about it, like Brother Richard said, right? Thank you, Jesus, right? Ooh. You know, praise the Lord. It just comes out right away. Why? Man, I have this joy. I have this assurance. I have conviction that whether it's my sin problem, whether it's, you know, health problems, whether it's any other problems, you know, mental problems, you know, a lot of Christians have depression problems, right? You don't believe it, but strong, strong Bible believers go through, you know, mental despair. Where God, where devil attacks them, where they want to just give up, they want to commit suicide, right? I mean, think about it. I mean, these are, we're talking about like missionaries, we're talking about strong men of God. They're thinking about giving it up. But they're not the first ones, right? You know, in the Bible, you see some people, our prophets, who wanted to give up as well. But at the end, God gives them that assurance. God gives him that conviction. Hey, you know, who's inside of you? Me. I'm inside of you. Don't you think that I'll become victorious? Right? You don't have to worry. I mean, that's why, he's, that's, I think that's the greatest, one of the greatest, you know, promises. For he cares for you, right? Lord, you know what? Again, but you do have to be balanced, right? Balanced Christian life, you do have to be diligent like and You have to do your best. You know, I don't want our kids to start sleeping on the Bible and think that they're going to get A next day by not even studying, not even opening any page of the, you know, school book. Or you for yourself, you know, sleeping with the Bible, you know, hugging the Bible, sleeping and think that you get a better job, you know, everything will be better. You know? No, no, it doesn't work like that. You, you still have to do, you know, whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the not unto man, and you have to do your best. With that, you know, out of the way, you can find victory, you can find assurance, and conviction, and strength, and encouragement. I don't have to die. Right? Yes. I don't need to get to the point of killing myself or you know, being so worried, anxious, and nervous where I can't even do anything in my life, right? You could kick that out of the way. You could just kick it, you know, kick it like the soccer ball, just kick it far away, like a kickball. Why? Because I'm relying on Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I brought everything to the Lord's table. That's why you have to bring everything. Every part of your life, A to Z, right? Everything to Lord's table and let the Lord take care of it. And then you're going to have victory one day at a time. Even starting today, you're going to see some victory that you never thought you would have in your life. You have triumph. You will be like, wow, man, I was anxious. I was nervous. I was depressed for no reason. I just had to bring it to the Lord and Lord's wearing it for me. And Lord's going to take care of it for me. Yes. Like, okay. Well, I'm going to just go out there and live a victorious Christian life. Woo! Man, I have a triumph in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, we go too many days not realizing who's inside of us, our Lord and Savior. We go too many days relying on every other thing except a new Lord to find victory. Just like the Bible says, we will have triumph in you, Lord, when we just trust in you, rely on you, when we do all things through you, Lord God. I pray that everyone 
who's listening and who's here, look at their life, examine their lives, and see where they've been, they're constantly being defeated by the world, by the devil, and by the flesh. I pray that everyone will examine their life and get right with you, Lord, and bring everything to you and live a triumphant Christian life, Lord. It is a joy and a blessing when we could go every day just praising you, Lord, whether it's a good day, whether it's a bad day, because if God be for us, who can be against us, Lord? We pray for Pastor Mike Shrive. We pray for all of our brethren who's going through especially physical illness, Lord. Please heal them, Lord, according to your will. And I pray that you come back soon, Lord. I mean, we can't wait for you to come back soon, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.